Night Swim. I happened to go see this movie two days ago or day, or yesterday. I can't remember the time I'm about it. Um, I saw it very recently. You saw the film last week, right? I saw it like when it first came out. So okay. the fifth or whatever. So before we get into like details and plot points and characters and all that good stuff, what is your overall sentiment of the film? Because I think you said you didn't speak very highly of it, right? Or you didn't think I did it. not. I I liked Wyatt Russell because I like Wyatt Russell in general, like him and his dad. Um, I liked him in the movie. Um, I thought the premise of it was very interesting because of course you know when they give you the trailer there's not really anything in the trailer to tell you exactly what's going on so of course like people who are already afraid to swim i was like oh, okay okay this is different and then the execution of it just was not so i would probably give it like maybe if i had to like write it or something i'd probably give it like a six six point five that's about where i was with the two um <laughs> I, I was like leaning five and then near the end, it was it, it, it like shot up to the six for me. I think, like you said before in the chat, I think the concept was there. I think the, the execution was kind of weak and I thought the buildup should have been, the stakes should have been raised at a, a better pace. Cause I felt like for the longest time, it was like, okay, things are happening. It, it felt, you know what it felt like? It felt like the first Nun movie to me, mm -hmm. where it was jump scare, build up jump scare build up tension build tension build but nothing of nothing availed of any of that stuff until like the last 15 minutes um and i, I at least for me in a horror movie i want that consistent pacing of the build up towards the climax as far as things getting more dreadful as time goes on and we didn't really get that well we kind of got it but again like i said before it was at a very very slow down turtle pace um but let me, I want to get into really quickly the people behind this film. So let's talk about the directors briefly, producers, and some of the actors. I will pull that up so I can be looking at it real quick and call them out. Um, so like you said, Wyatt Russell is in the film. He's playing the father of the family. Is it Barry? Or what was the dad's name? I can't remember the dad's name. Ray. Um, Ray, that's his name. Emil, I'm about to butcher her name. I can't even pronounce that. I ain't going to hold you. Emil Horfrey, Horfrey, mm, yeah, not doing that, not doing that to myself. But he, that, she's the playing, she's playing the mother. Oh no, that's the daughter. I'm tripping. Carrie Condon is playing the mother of the film. She's playing the mother. Um, yeah, um, I think the girl's name is M Emily. But it's Emily, like wow. M Emily. It's, it's very Slavic in nature to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Those like to me are the relevant characters. I mean, obviously the the son, the son. Let me look at his name real quick. Gavin. I don't Warren, I remember think. the. Yeah, I don't only really remember. I only remember the characters' names and Wyatt Russell's name. I do not remember any <laughs> Yeah, because like it felt like nobody else was really relevant. Everybody else felt like a plot device, mm -hmm. which is it's not a terrible thing to do in a story. Sometimes to have people like characters be plot devices, but I don't want them to feel like a, a literal tool. For the, for the film um but i digress to get into some people that aren't aware of what the film is if again spoilers here for we're going to spoil all this shit to death um essentially the whole idea of the film is that there is this pool at this one house and this pool isn't a regular pool that's you know built with chlorine that you fill up and all those different types of things with like a automatic self-sustaining um, right this pool has the ability well has a history of having a natural spring underneath it. So I guess people who ever built it either it's drilled into the ground to the, the aquifer there for that water or it's like, I think didn't they say it's like a Native American spring or some shit? Yeah, they said it was because they said it was like a lake. They did a flashback of it being a lake, but then yeah. I'm like, where, 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 where. Or it's not a, not a Native American spring, but it's like a healing spring. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, they caught like, it. Oh, you have to be sad. You have to be sacrificed to it. I was like, yeah, it's a, it's oh. a, it's like a wishing well type of situation with a monkey's paw twist mm -hmm. on it. And they mm -hmm. said the native Americans discovered it and they were worshiping it because of the, because essentially the way it works is that once you get inside of the water, it's activated. And from that point on any, it grants your biggest desire, essentially like it looks, it looks into the recesses of your mind 
and sees what you're what you desire. So for this instance in this film, the main character, the father, is an injured baseball player who has some kind of brain damage going on or concussion maybe that is causing yeah, he had him an to illness. not. He had an illness. Okay, I didn't know if it was like a fit, mm -hmm. like a. They didn't discuss like an actual like accident happening. Yeah, they said like he didn't. He had to quit baseball because he had an illness or whatever. But the thing that was like weird to me, so the family before the Fuller family, the boy was like terminally ill. Okay. Mm. And then he comes in and he has an illness. I don't even think that they described what the illness is, but he cuts his hand before he gets into the water. And I'm like, what is the significance of him cutting his hand? If the water is the healing water and it already, like once you get it in, it already knows that you're sick. What is the point of him cutting his hand before getting in? Well, so no, because remember that when he first found the house, he fell into the house, he fell into the pool. Like we're just looking at that before they bought it, before they cleaned it and everything. Yeah. So and he, then he it, like before he got into like the water part, he cut his hand. Yeah, but he that well was activated once he fell into the pool. That's when he had the vision and they saw him wanting to play baseball again and all that good stuff. Right. So what is the point of him cutting his hand? I think that was just to show like the healing properties of it early on. Because essentially he like fell in, activated the pool, and then when he were cleaning out, he cut his hand, and then like five to ten minutes later, they showed that his hand was fully healed and there was no scarring on it, and he was like tripping out like, oh my god, yeah, it was it was it was it was the best executed thing. Now it would have been yeah, cool if it was, was, that was weird. Uh, if it was like a Wolverine thing where he like healed on the spot, I'm like okay, that would have made more yes. sense. Like or like trip. if he when he fell in like you know he fell in or like if he like a serious injury but if the, like the thing is that like and then they go into the story when they're talking about how he, the mother tracks down the family prior mm -hmm. and she talks about how her son was completely healed so like They've been talking about his illness and how, like, he's changed from his illness. He attempted to drown that boy where they were like, oh, it's a side effect of his illness. But then his illness is getting better because he's been in the pool. And I'm just like, y'all keep adding keep things. In mind, keep in mind, they don't. They never specify what this illness is. It's At some all. sort of neurodivergent nerve damage, I guess. To that, I don't know if, like... It has him seize up because they talk about like the wife talks about when like he almost drowns that one kid that you know sometimes he has like nerve issues where he like shuts down the body tenses up but then they never show that any other time before then so i'm like okay was he lying in that instance or to like make things look more less uh attempted murdery for lack of a better term or i don't know they never they never flush out what this disease is and i think that was a big thing for me at least i'm like if this is going to be a major plot point for this main character, I would like some sort of detail as to what's going on with him. Is it Alzheimer's? What is it? I don't know. I assumed it was like a concussion because they had him being like sensitive to certain sounds and lights at certain points in the film early on. And I'm like, okay, he has a really bad concussion from like a baseball hitting him in the head or something. Um, but to that point, yeah, like you got like like we were saying, it it heals you once you activate inside of the pool. And in order for that wish to be fully granted and you to be fully healed and sustain that gift that the pool is giving you, you have to have a, a soul or another life be sacrificed to it. So usually from what we notice from the when they're doing the whole researching part of the film that every horror movie has where there's a spirit or a house that goes through the it's either Google, it's some kind of made up web browser. And the person can all of a sudden find records on every family from modern day up until the two of the twenties, um, mm -hmm. and they're showing that families did their families disappear, which is another weird thing for me. Is that in her history she was looking at? Um, she mentioned that the families disappear, not like one individual from the family, but like the entire family is disappearing. So I'm like, are they getting in multiple times, or is the pool requiring multiple sacrifices? Because once the sacrifice is made, the pool like deactivates and it's like a regular well for that at that point. So I'm trying yeah, to understand. And that, and that one I was also confused because it was saying like whole families disappear, but then it's like he threw his son into the pool as the sacrifice into the pool, but then he tried to kill the daughter. So I'm just like, which he didn't try to. At least from what I saw, I didn't know like he was trying to kill her. Because even remember he locked her in the room at the end. He was like, I can't let you interfere with your brother dying. Which is why he was like hawking her now, because um, he like he because I remember he like threw her to the side and she ran. He like allowed her to run away and then he ran up on her in the garage 
again, it was a whole point of one of those things where you have a chase scene that feels pointless because mm-hmm. he's not trying to do anything. He's literally just like scaring her. And if that was like a it type of thing where like the fear is a big motivating factor in what you're doing, I would understand it. But why are you just chasing her to scare her and say corny lines like a rainy movie? And I mean, that's well, my that, thing too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. They made this very like camping near the end at certain parts. And I'm like, that didn't match the consistent tone for the whole film. It just got really campy last minute where the dad's saying like random lines. Uh, he's possessed on some Jack Nicholson shining type of stuff or, or like, a, like a deadite from the evil dead. It just, it felt very weird. Um, it just, it, it didn't feel right, man. This movie all together just didn't feel consistent. Um, initially I will say, I, I assumed that this, um, from the trailers that James Wan was directing and writing this film, Brian McGuire is a director and one of the writers for the film. Um, James Wan was just a producer on it. So he was just doing hit. Yeah. And I think, I think Jason Bloom was also part of it. And Jason Bloom, I think did in did he is, is that what I said? Yeah, he was part of it. Um, he did, in, yeah, he's part of Insidious and he's part of Paranormal Activity. And so I'm like, well, and, and I, it felt like it was trying to give some Insidious vibes because, you know, of course, in Insidious, it was, they move into this house, there's been murders at this particular house with these different families, and it's the children becoming possessed because they're about to be kidnapped by like a whole other entity. And so when I was sitting here watching it, I was just like, this is insidious with water. <laughs> and y'all just changed it from the kids killing people to the dad. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um... It did feel like that because they, they, like they kind of alluded to like another universe in that side of the pool with like the the like a hatch almost it was like a little square light hatch mm-hmm. that went to, like, into the further or the deeper I guess is what I call it because it's in the water. Um, it I don't know, man. It, it felt like they were just trying to piece together a script. I'm 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 kind of disappointed because. I think really highly of Blumhouse. I think Blumhouse has done really good work. And it's pretty much, I think they've been leading horror the last couple of years as far as like their productions. And even outside of horror, I think that that comedy, right? With uh, Meg Thee Stallion that she's in. Uh, Harold and Kumar type thing, I think. So they did, like the studio does amazing work. And I'm just like, why would y'all do this? Like this had to be a favor to somebody because this didn't feel like fully fleshed out. This didn't feel like a lot of, thought was put into the script and how this thing works it felt very it felt like smile that's another thing it reminded me of like this like like this uh what's the website that they had like i like smile really we could talk about that a little bit i like like smile i like the concept of smile i'll say that because they they are coming with a smile too i liked the concept of smile i think it could have been yeah it could have been fleshed out a little bit better I think um but I liked the concept of smile because it kind of was a little bit different uh really creepy I already don't like when people just randomly smile at me anyway mm-hmm. so for it to be a constant thing <laughs> I think yeah I, agree. I think the concept was uh was amazing and I think in using that it led to some amazing stuff as far as like like you said before like if somebody's smiling at you in a setting that isn't normal something that sticks out and it, they could have that happen anywhere. And I think the playing around with that and not knowing of what's really what isn't is always a great thing to manipulate inside of a film. But yeah, that story and then like the mama kaiju monster at the end, that was a whole thing. Me and Ethan reviewed that on Then and Now a while, like last year, because I think Ethan, when he was working with Paramount, was uh, like he went to the premiere for that. So I went and saw it in theaters and we talked about that. I, we, I, I try to be positive when it comes to horror because that's this is a uh, a genre I love and I think is already really disrespected. But I tore that movie to shreds. I ain't gonna hold you. We we tried to be nice. We tore that shit to shreds. That shit was not it for me. I was highly disappointed in that film, especially with how good the trailers were. I'm like, bro, y'all just wasted that. I know time. the trailers were like amazing, but you um, know what? I I I have not seen a really good horror movie since. I'm not quite sure you would count this as a horror movie. I guess it would probably be more of a thriller. I put it in the horror movie category because that's just where I put it. Uh, the Invisible Man. That was really good. I put it, I put it before. Like, like characters like historically horror. 
Yes, I, I the Invisible Man. I mean, but I, and I would say the Black Phone, but the Black Phone is more of a thriller. It's not necessarily a horror to me. Um, yeah. But Invisible Man, I think, is probably one of the last really good horror movies that I've seen in a really long time. Did you and watch Talk to, me? To, Talk to Me? I haven't gotten to see Talk to Me yet, and I want to watch it Go so watch bad. I love A24. Go watch Talk to Me. Talk to Me. Oh, man. A24. I no, it was, a A24. Movie. it was A24 that was going to make a movie. I got them confused. I think they're doing it, that, that comedy, but yeah. Um, oh, yeah, with the Megan Mac- Yeah, it's A24. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I-, I love A24 because um, I liked, actually, I can't, I can't even say that. I can't even lie and say it was Invisible Man because I liked Hereditary. Mm. Hereditary was a lot. Yeah, I love that. That was an amazing film to me. Hered- Hereditary was a lot. And I you talking about the Otis thinks boring, me. by the way. That's be more smoke for you to have with him. Huh? So Otis thinks it's boring as hell, by the way. That's more smoke you can have with him. <laughs> I loved Hereditary, but I really do want to see Talk to Me because, and one of the reasons I wanted to see Talk to Me so bad is because I was looking online because I love movie props. So at this time, I'm trying to get the Book of the Dead and the Book of the Living from the Mummy in the from the '90s. Um, but they have the hand from Talk to Me no, on Amazon, and I was like, I need to have it. It's really fucking good. It's a really good movie. You would love that movie. You would re- genuinely love that film. It's a really well done film. Um, and it was like a, yes, it was yeah. probably the better. That was probably the best horror movie that came out last year, in my opinion. It's up there. Um, yeah, it's it's not even close. I think that. No, I didn't see Saw Ten. No. Do you consider Saw horror? No, I do not. Yeah, that's my thing. I. I consider like a thriller, like a like a whodunit type of thing, like like seven. I I mean I do like I I put it as like a like a thriller psychological psychological horror maybe, but um like the first one definitely scared me because I was like when he got up off the floor in the bathroom, um, uh-huh. I thought I was also going to have a heart attack. <laughs> I was like, excuse oh, me. Um, twist, I love the twist. How like intricate the like again James Wan does a may he can start a franchise off like a motherfucker like no other. Finish your shit, James. Finish your shit. That's all I ask. That is all I ask. Everything after that, everything after the, I want to say the third one, I just watch for the traps. I don't watch for the story. I do. I watch for the traps and I watch for the twist because I want to see who else is connected to this. Um, And so when we got to Saw 10 and it's kind of like in the beginning-ish, chronologically speaking, I was like, Okay, so we have early traps. I like I like this stuff. I just like blood and gore. That's about it. That's probably why people always think that I have stuff. That's why you're disturbed. I'm not disturbed. Yes, Shut up. You are. <laughs> that pops. That's my you brother. Mean, that's your brother. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, woman after my own heart. We'll, we'll we'll talk more about this. I gotta introduce you to our friend Danny. She was a ex special effects uh, makeup person on film like horror and me and her talked about horror stuff i want to get you guys together on the stream at some point or a video because i think y'all would get along it'd be a dope one but to read the readjust back to the to the film really quickly before we get off track too far we can we can circle back to saw and smile and all that good stuff um but for the film like we said we've been day that we essentially went over the the premise of it already but and some of the issues with it i wanted to get into the design of the or like the monsters too. I I had a big issue with them showing like this zombie consistently and that not really being anything. That was one of the things we like they did. They kept doing stuff like having spirits show up in the pool or like that monster being in the pool. And I think I think part of the crux of the difficulty of this is there's only danger when you're there at the pool. And if nothing's going like if you're not at the house and at the pool, nothing's going on. And even when they're at the pool going on, it has to like lure them to the pool at a certain point. So it never felt like anything was urgent. Like there was no sense of urgency in the film. And I think the not best part was when like she went to go speak to the mother that previously lived there in 92. And because you got to see some of the extended power of the pool of like, okay, this person 20 years in the future, it still has a hold on. And it it was able to like do something to control this person remotely and that being the case i'm like why didn't you use that in a better way to like set up more stuff maybe you could like 
I feel like the pool should have worked similar to um how much I think of almost like a Necronomicon in the sense to where like I, the way I would have written it is I would have had the pool have the ability to control people like it did beforehand, but utilize the people that is controlled, like everybody that's gotten their wish, to lure more people to it. Because for the fact there's like a 20 year gap of nobody going to the pool and utilizing it, because I'm looking at the pool like a living entity that wants people to come and wish at it. And then why would you allow nobody to be there, especially when you can control people for a long period, like 20 years out and have that much control on them? Even more so when the mom is very much so known to be like she's very affluent and has a good bit of money and like her son has some money. Why wouldn't they like buy the house and rent it out like an Airbnb or why wouldn't they throw it up for a really cheap price to get people to come back in there or just rent it out to tenants and have that something where you're consistently feeding the pool or the pool's feeding itself. It's just like little things like that where I'm like, OK, there is a lot more you could have done with that script to me that you just didn't do it. You kind of left on the table. There's a lot of meat on the bones. But in, but then again, it, it's kind of just like the flaw that they created with the pool because once you make the sacrifice to the pool, then essentially it's like the pool's done. It's like the pool's done with the conversation now. Right. So it's, so it's just like, what is the point in introducing that power of being able to control people from a distant like time, like through time and space so you have out, like ample opportunity to continue to feed yourself but you're already self-sustaining so you don't really have to and then you also have where it's a cutoff oh you've already sacrificed somebody to me so okay bye have a good day and it's just like do you have powers or not like what is happening and so i, I so think me. they're gonna do that it could have just it could have either just if your sacrifice is like it ends that for you but does it keep just being self-sustaining after the one sacrifice or like right. are you going to write it different to where it has to keep having others others sacrifice to it so it's like they just made it where it's self-sustaining but then also included the fact that they can control other people but then didn't do anything with that this story in general felt like a creepy a, a old school creepy pasta from back in the day Mm -hmm. like a casual horror short that didn't have a lot of like flushed out depth to it Yep. that got popular because we both acknowledge the concept is interesting and there's a lot more you could have done with the concept right and this is again this is I try not to say like be the guy to always say this shit because I know I'm not a professional or I don't have any skin in the game when it comes to like film writing or screenplays but I generally believe I could have wrote a better screenplay for this film if i would like yeah. sat down in a room with like a right team we could have came up with something better than this because this is so like, very unpolished i feel like it should have been edited a couple times and more people should have seen this so uh writer brian mcguire yeah bright well, bryce mcguire i think you should have you think there's a, a better job for you to do here on this film I, I, also I, somebody named um it's named rod blackhurst i think it's what the other writer is piece. too so you have like two yeah. people who were working on this story and but you know it that's it reminds me of like the story being written by two people and it seems like there's two different ideas that are happening reminds me of that really bad anime um x arm <laughs> where it's obviously two different animators in the exact same room, not speaking to each other, animating the exact same scene with two completely different styles. So one is regular anime and the other one is like 3D anime like Ruby. And they're yeah. doing the exact same scene, but they're not talking to each other. That's what the storyline felt like. They were in the same room writing the story without talking to each other. <laughs>